Hello everyone. In last lecture, we have discussed working of ballistic galvanometer. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss theory of ballistic galvanometer. Okay. Now let us see the first point of theory. Here, let a current I flow through the rectangular coil of n number of turns and a cross sectional area A. Here in block diagram, this is the copper coil which is having n number of turns and cross sectional area A. Okay. Now let us see the second point when this coil is placed in a uniform radial magnetic field B, the coil experiences torque tau. In block diagram, you can see that this is the copper coil which is placed between the two magnetic poles which produces radial magnetic field. Due to this radial magnetic field, this copper coil experiences force on these two sides. One is out of board, another is into the board. That we have discussed already in, in working of ballistic galvanometer. Due to these two forces, this coil rotates from its initial position. Here, because of these two forces, a torque is created. Due to this torque, this copper coil rotates. Okay, now let us see the next point. Here, we need to consider first a single turn PQRS of the rectangular coil having a length L and breadth B. Here, this copper coil is having n number of turns. Out of n number turns, we need to consider only a single turn. Here, we have considered a single turn and we have denoted its ends P, Q, R, S and this is the magnetic field B and it is having length L and breadth B. What we have done? Out of n number of turns in the copper coin, we have considered a single turn and denoted its ends P, Q, R, S and it is having length L and breadth B. Okay, now let us see the next point. Since the sides PS and QR are parallel to the direction of the magnetic field, they do not experience any effective force due to the magnetic field. Here PS and QR are parallel to the radial magnetic field. Due to this, they do not experience any force. This edge that is this top side and bottom side that is PS and QR, they do not experience any force because they are parallel to the radial magnetic field. Okay, now let us see the next one, next point. The sides PQ and SR being perpendicular to the direction of field experience an effective force F. Here sides PQ and SR they are perpendicular to the radial magnetic field so they experience force. One is out of board and another is into the board and this force is given by F is equals to on sides PQ the force is given by F is equals to the amount of current which is flowing in the circuit that is the current I flows in the circuit
in the presence of radial magnetic field it experiences force on sides pq and sr and we can find this force here i into sides p q cross product of radial magnetic field this can be written as b into i and pq is given by l into sin theta here the angle is magnetic field and current vectors are perpendicular so angle between them is 90 degree so theta is equals to 90 so theta is equals to 90 degree sin 90 is equals to 1 so force is equals to b into i into l this is the amount of force acting on sides pq and similarly the force acting at sides sr is same f is equals to current into the side yes r cross product of magnetic field and which is equals to b into i it is having sr is equals to l so sr is equals to l into sin theta here the magnetic field vector and current vector both are perpendicular so the angle between them is 90 degree so theta is equals to 90 after substituting theta value sin 90 is equals to 1 so f is equals to b into i into l where b is the magnetic field i is current flowing in the copper coil l is the length of the copper coil okay now these this is the force which is acting at side pq i this is the force which is acting at sides yes sir okay now let us see next point here we have already calculated force on pq that is f is equals to b magnetic field into current into length according to fleming's left hand rule this force is normal to the plane of the coil and acts outwards we have already discussed this point okay now force on yes rs force on rs is f is equals to b into i into l here two forces are acting if you see from top side this is the single turn of rectangular coil one force is acting out of the board which is f is equals to b into i into l and another force is acting into the board which is force is equals to b into i into l if you observe same situation from top side you can see this is the case if you observe from top side one force is acting downward one force is acting upwards due to this force a torque is created and we have already know that torque is equals to tau is equals to force into distance between two forces that is the distance between two forces is b that is breadth if we substitute force value from this equation that is magnitude of any one force that is force value is b into i into l into b length into breadth gives us area of the 
this rectangular coil that is B into I into A that is length this is the breadth if you multiply these two we will get total area that is length into breadth is equals to area this is the torque acting at single coil that is single turn okay now let us see the next point if there are n turns in the coil the moment of deflecting couple or torque here simple we have calculated torque for single turn we need to find for n number of turns to find torque for n number of turns we need to multiply this equation by n this n represents n number of turns into b into i into a this is the torque which is acting at copper coil due to this torque the copper coil rotates okay now let us see the next point here the next point is the suspension wire twists when the coil deflects on account of elasticity a restoring couple is set up in the wire and if theta is the angular twist then the restoring couple is given by in last lecture we have discussed that when copper coil rotates from its initial position to some position it produces twist in the suspension wire and this restoring force is given by or restoring torque is given by rho is equals to c theta where theta is the angular deflection here let us suppose this is the copper coil and it is attached to suspen suspension suspension when this copper coil rotates it produces twist in the suspension and from the property of elasticity this suspension develops restoring force and this restoring force is, is equal to the c theta here c is the restoring couple for unit twist one more important thing is that at equilibrium deflecting couple is equal to the restoring couple here when this copper coil rotates from its initial position it is having some magnetic deflecting couple and this copper coil rotating from its position and suddenly this copper coil will stop rotation when the restoring force which is developed in the suspension becomes equal to the magnetic restoring couple so what happens the magnetic restoring couple that is n into b i a we have already calculated torque for n number of turns which becomes equal to this restoring couple then if you simplify this equation i is equals to c divided by n b a n into b into a into theta that is this is the constant value so i is proportional directly proportional to theta where c divided by n into b into a this is the constant k is equals to c divided by n into b into a it is the constant here a pointer attached to the spring indicates the deflection theta on the scale let us explain this point at the end of lecture okay 
here what we have observed current is directly proportional to the deflection okay now let us see the next point